I think sometimes art can stop time if it's great art and it's greatly performed or rendered. It, I, that's how I try to explain it. It can stop time. And uh, as you like it, uh, greatly performed by uh, Kenneth Branagh's, he directed it, but his actors, his version of it, 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 it had the effect of just making all the troubles that Violet now was confronting go away. And even her conversation with uh, Edgy, she was so absorbed in it. They all were. Uh, once again, because it, it, it was brilliantly done, and art seems like it, it can do that. Uh, now, it helped, of course, that Elaine understood that language so well. And so, you know, she would periodically pause it if they wanted her to, to try to explain. And it took a lot of explaining. Now, as you like it, you, you probably realize it. it's a romp. It, it, it takes place in the forest of Arden. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things that, well, they all enjoyed it. And I, I don't want to explain the whole plot. It, no time for that. But when they got to the end, you know, they... They sort of looked to uh, Elaine uh, to say, well, you know, what'd you think? And she says, oh, that was fun. And, and, and how about gender bending? Isn't that what you call it? This is Elaine talking. She says, I read somewhere that in Shakespeare's day, all, <clears throat> all the <clears throat> actors had to be male. <clears throat> so the women, they were, they were played by boys whose voice hadn't changed yet. So... You've got, you've got all the women in that play <clears throat> are being played by boys. And in the case of Rosalind being played by a boy, she uh, disguises herself as a boy. So we've got a boy playing a woman playing a boy. And, and then uh, Ganymede is what she calls herself. And then Ganymede, uh, he coaches Orlando in how to deal with his love, and he does that by pretending to be Rosalind. <laughs> so <coughs> you've got an actor pretending to be Rosalind, pretending to be Ganymede, pretending to be Rosalind. Uh, you know, I'd lose track of it all. And, uh, and then, while she's pretending to be Ganymede, a page, uh, a country girl named Phoebe, uh, played by a boy, falls in love uh, with uh, G Ganymede. It just is so crazy, and but fun, and, and it's possible to keep it sorted out. Now, now, by the end, there's a quadruple marriage. She said, uh, it's so unrealistic, but so much fun. Uh, she really liked it. Uh, and she also pointed out that, uh, that uh, well, the language. She said, she said, for example, one point, what was it? Uh, Rosalind uh, <laughs> said, playing Ganymede, said to the country girl, uh, sell while you may, you are not for all markets. <laughs> Which is, and Lance, of course, he looks blank. He was a little slow at picking up uh, the language, but uh, 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 she said it was a, a way of saying, you're not a real catch, you, you better take what you can. Oh, so anyway, uh, oh, and, and the other thing she pointed out, you know, she was giving her review, was that it was so much about country life versus city life, the court versus the forest, uh, uh, because the uh, old duke was, was uh, he, he, had, he had to go, what's the word, not marooned, he, he had to hide in the forest of Arden because of his brother and all that, but but there's a speech, for example, that that uh, now, oh I oh there it is, um, that now Elaine she could remember it. she just quoted it I knew I couldn't but I've got it here, the old Duke at one point his opening speech says, he goes now my co-mates and brothers in exile hath not old custom made this life more sweet than that of the painted pomp. Are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Here feel we but the penalty of Adam, 
the season's difference as the icy fangs and churlish chiding of the winter's wind, which, when it bites and blows upon my body even till I shrink with cold, I smile and say, this is no flattery. These are counselors that feelingly persuade me what I am. Sweet are the uses of adversity, and this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. I would not change it. He likes the country life. You know, Lance, of course, once again, he, he said, sermons in stones, what the heck is he talking about? books in the running brooks. He just wasn't, didn't have the mind for that kind of language, but Elaine sure did. So uh, anyway, uh, Elaine's point though was she said something she didn't understand is why at the end when everything got, got solved and they were all happy, why did they go back to the court? Uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it, it was the old Duke's court once again and he could but if they liked it so much in the countryside, why didn't they stay there? And she didn't have a good answer. She wondered, <clears throat> I wonder what Shakespeare really thought about the countryside. Well, anyway, they, they, it, time started to come back. I mean, that time was a happy time, which they had had again and again now. But they all then went to bed. And, you know, as Elaine, uh, as, uh, as, they all went to bed at the same time, really, and uh, Violet, she lay there awake, and Elaine knew she probably would, and uh, Elaine, uh, she started to sing, knowing that Violet could probably hear her, uh, and she was singing a song that she'd found in Jesus Christ Superstar when she'd been looking, searching for that one, I don't know how to love him, uh, and the words went, close your eyes, close your eyes, just forget about, just forget all about it tonight. Close your eyes, close your eyes, just forget all about it tonight. And the song goes over and over like that. And sure enough, before very long, sleep shut up sorrow's eye for Violet. And, and Lance also, they all then had a good night's sleep.